Our next speaker will be uh, Dr. Yulia Bernstein. She will speak about the paradoxes of the living in contested, contested social worlds of ex-Soviet Jews in Germany. Dr. Yulia Bernstein is a cultural anthropologist, sociologist, and artist. She is a lecturer at the Institute of Comparative Educational Studies and Social Sciences of the Cologne University and at the Department of, for Social Work and Health of the University of Applied Sciences in Frankfurt on Main. Her main research focuses on migration processes, transitional per perspectives, and transformations in ex-socialist societies, identity questions, especially through the analysis of material culture and food, and food consumption. Her book, Food for Thought, Traditional Contested Identities and Food Practices of Russian-speaking Jews, Migrants in Israel and Germany from 2010, was published by Chicago University Press and Camp Campus Verlag. Thank you. I'm trying to. Food for Thought, it was the book which was published. Thank you very much for the invitation and the nice introduction. Um, maybe I should tell some words uh, directly about um, what you asked me to do about uh, identities, like a kind of introduction to my paper. Um, um, I tried to deal in my dissertation, and I'm still dealing with this topic, not only with Jewishness as an identity, but with my multiple identities. And, um, I mean this point of multiplicity of different identities which contradict to each other are for me the central topic. Um, in this case people have to cope not only with their Jewish needs but also with the very fact that they are migrants and uh, it means not only at the very beginning but also 15 years or 20 years after the arriving. And um, the central point is that um, all people have different multiple identities and we have to feel we, it's absolutely necessary for the successful interaction to feel that we are free to, ch to choose um, this a kind of identity which we want in the interaction. And we are a very, um, we feel not very comfortable when we are addressed as a representative or certain identity. When we are addressed as, what do you think as Russian? What do you think as Jewish? What do you think as migrant? And so on. And uh, this happens because um, all identities are connected with statuses. And some statuses are higher and other statuses is are um, low, um, not so high and we are as the partners in the interaction we are interested to present those identities which are connected with the positive statuses and it's absolutely um, um, not successful to um, such a situation in which uh, 
all our personality is reduced to one and only one identity, like Russians, like Viva Deutsche. That's what you meant, uh, meant in, at the beginning. Uh, because uh, we are responsible not only as a social scientist, but, but also as people in the society, we are responsible for reproducing or not reproducing stereotypes. And we are necessary to reproduce stereotypes through such categories, like uh, Russians, but Bio-Deutsche is even worse because of the, this racial component, and which what we ta uh, talked yesterday was uh, the it was new for me to understand that my students don't understand, most of them, uh, that this sarcastic touch of this Bio-Deutsche, because uh, not all of them know, you know the historical backgrounds on their reproduced, the, uh, reproduced category like Bio-Deutsche, which is very problematic without understanding that uh, it's connected with the Holocaust, for example, directly. So it's then, it is a little bit dangerous in this sense. Um, well, the central, uh, the central, maybe I will start with this quote, which, uh, which uh, shows this contradiction between different uh, statuses as winners and as Jews. This uh, said, uh, one person said it, one woman who was born 20 years after the Holocaust, and she says, whenever I find work particularly, particularly difficult, I say to myself, you can do it. After all, we won the war. So she feels herself uh, still in the war in symbolical sense um, and uh, wants to, to prove that migrants ha can work not as stereotype says uh, we, that foreigners cannot work in comparison to Germans. That's what she said to me uh, during the interview. So she pick, fixes, uh, she, she takes this narrative of winners and uh, brings it, it in here and uh, uh, now, to the German context in which she is positioned, uh, she is um, yeah positioned at the bottom of, um, of the social hierarchy. The central question of uh, my thesis was how do people interact in a situation in which different um, bodies of knowledge, different political narratives, and different constructions of social worlds, usually taken for, taken for granted, meet and clash in the inner phenomenological domain as well as in, uh, in the transnational biographic um, experience of migrants. What happens when, through migration and intercultural interactions, the same events are remembered, understood, and interpreted in a completely different manner, not only by different groups in the former Soviet Union, Israel, and Germany, but also by different Jewish groups in these countries? What individual strategies do migrants in uh, Germany develop in order to cope with different contested identities? And, uh, I will present a couple of such contradictive identities. The social context of every receiving society with its local social, cultural, and uh, political discourses has a strong impact on the way migrants articulate their reasons for migration on the process of settling into the new country. The migrants themselves do feel the necessity to review and to change the components of their multiple identity, being Russian, Jewish, ex-Soviet, European, and educated member of the intelligentsia. Apart from that, the dominant groups in the receiving society quite often urge um, them in a particular way to, co to come up uh, to existing expectations, a request that causes clashes and which many migrants cannot accept. And still, it's, it is about categories like um, integration, because as somebody told me uh, in the interview, there is no day in which I wake up and say, well, today I'm integrated. So it's like really a te theoretical concept which, uh, which still reproduces a very strong hierarchy and very strong um, relations be between those who expect and those who have to fit and not other way around. 
So it is not about participation of all people who have to participate in the society, but about uh, minority who is addressed to, to, to change. During my, inter uh, during my investigation, I found out that migrants uh, often try to find a way, of, uh, a way to reconcile their subjective ideas and personal concepts of uh, collective affiliations on the one hand with collective narratives of dominating um, resident groups on the other hand. In addition, the destabilizing challenges encountered in the migration process, which are due to the modification of identity and the experience of great discrepancies and the need to cope with them, causes Russian-speaking Jewish, Jewish migrants in Germany to feel obligations and uh, pressures in uh, many spheres of um, everyday life. Objectively, there were many new aspects of life for participants who emigrated from the Soviet Union uh, to Israel or Germany, for example, the abundance of material objects, market economies, uh, self-marketing, marketing, diversity of political parties, democracy and freedom, as well as exposure uh, to the Jewish uh, religion, history and culture, which was uh, forbidden for many years. As in other studies, this process and accompanying transformations proved to be far from being easy, indeed quite often problematic. As one interview partner, Misha, phrased it, our Soviet re uh, residues are everything. Kolya referred uh, to this process through another strong metaphor of Soviet nails. Quote, they grew so deeply in our bodies and brain that uh, they became all, almost an inseparate, inseparable uh, part of us. It is often easier for people to neglect them than to try to get rid of these nails. nails. In this process, many of uh, the assumptions about collective identities to which uh, they had been socialized were taken for granted, so to speak, it was thinking as usually, and those that, uh, resources which supported and reaffirmed uh, uh, their pre-immigration lives were revealed to be precarious, controversial, and even negatively laden in the receiving society. So the same things which were resources turned to be um, problematic identities. Participants um, were exposed to the normative dominant thinking of the resident groups and to receiving society's integration uh, policies, both of which embody power hierarchies. Whereas in Israel, um, the participants' alienation was twofold, as immigrants and as Russians. It was fourfold in Germany, as immigrants, as a minority, as Russians, and as Jews. According to the participants' interviews, the normative dominant thinking as well as integration policies were grounded in several primary assumptions. Migrants were the only members of society expected to adapt, to adjust, to change, to learn, and in this uh, most extreme form of expression, uh, they were expected to be grateful, to be grateful to the receiving society and to its self-appointed representatives for granting them the right to immigrate to the Western paradise. To quote Rosvita Brekna, paradoxes in uh, life uh, we references appeared in particular where migrants have to cope with paradoxes to legitimate their affiliation uh, narratives and uh, to maintain loyalty to several contradicting uh, narratives. So people, some actions may indicate simultaneously multiple affiliation as well as affiliations and, and others um, neither nor affiliations. Um, well, let me deal with respective paradoxes and uh, at more um, length and um, mention some uh, controversial points or status conflicts. The first one, and uh, it's important to mention that I'm, I dealt only with people who, 
who um, are 50 years old and older. So it's very good. I, I, was, very, I was very happy that Edna presented the paper because it's good news. Um, I don't have such good news to report because I dealt with a group which is uh, mostly um, uh, supported by social, social welfare since um, 15, 20 years. The first point, the high um, professional qualifications obtained over decades, the university education, social recognition and professional careers in the former Soviet Union proved to be irrelevant and inappropriate in Germany, i.e. they were not all at all recognized. Thus, the professional qualifications turn up, turned out to be the source of frustration for many migration who living in Germany are unable to get uh, along with social welfare. Proceed, proceeding uh, on the new social economic status at the lower end of the social hierarchy, the discrepancy uh, with the transport itself image becomes even more obvious and appears to be very contradictory. This became apparent during my field research talking about the importance of the former professional position in the Soviet Union and waiting at the same time, waiting in the line for free food rations um, allotted by the German church. The second, the affiliation with the Soviet intelligentsia stratum met with little interest of the non-Russian speaking groups in uh, Germany. The comment on the beautiful literature of a Russian language, a reason for pride and social recognition in the former Soviet Union, doesn't contribute to social participation in the new society. Quite opposite, the migration's linguistic insecurity often becomes noticeable as an exist existential insecurity in their self-perception and behavioral patterns. The affiliation with the Russian culture, having a positive connotation in the eyes of migration, has been incriminated by the repeatedly stigmatized labeling as Rusim, Russians. This explains why um, individuals who regard themselves affiliated to Russian culture are, however, offended when other people refer to them as Rusim, Russians. Second, uh, third point, also their pride in possessing uh, the European cultural habitus was not reciprocal and even highly questioned, especially in Germany where they are often uh, seen as half Asian. The host's um, view was due to the long history of just deposing of Eastern and Western European affiliations, as well as socialization to negative perceptions of totalitarian regime of, the, of uh, Soviet European republics. Next point, another main source uh, for um, collective pride of the migrants, the pride of being part of Soviet great power, dissolved in retrospective view of history after the fall of the Soviet Union, which from the Western perspective has been understood as evidence of the failure of the socialist system. The dream maintained over, de over decades of material wealth in communism was only symbolically realized in the capitalistic West. Western uh, affluence finds its attractive expression. Um, just a moment. Um, attractive expression in the Russian thank you, food store by groceries imported from uh, Russia or Ukraine like chocolates produced by confectories like confectory, uh, confectioners like um, Red October this is the name of confectioner yeah? very very high prestigious highly prestigious Red October, Bolshevik, Karl Marx, uh, Rot Front, 
platform. Yeah. Or Krupskaya. Krupskaya was alive, was the wife of Lenin. Yeah. Those those are chocolates of those uh, confectioneries, which are very very um, loved. And I just looked for one quote. <coughs> That, uh, that the dream of, uh, um, it's paradox, that the dream about capitalism was fulfilled through the communist ideas, ideas about paradise in the communist society. And part of uh, uh, those chocolates, uh, we, uh, for example, this one on the top, uh, which is, um, Red October was very, very um, expensive chocolate and was connected with, with the high status. So it's paradox how people still, um, still buy it and don't connect with the Red October. They don't connect with this revolution of 1917, but uh, they connect, they do connect with this uh, uh, confectionery, um, well, well sta um, wealthy, high status of living. Yeah. Um, so commercial uh, commercials today instrumentalize these positive emotions and personal memories by use of familiar propaganda slogans. This this strategy in reviving key political Soviet trade slogans, such as "Soviet means the best." <laughs> As a mark of quality, products was well known to all participants and seemed um, to work. The next point, the next source of pride, which turned to be prob uh, problematic, um, affiliation and identif identification with the collective winners of the World War II shifted um, significantly from being uh, a source of pride and strong support to be another narrative of others, and in their case, to the role of victims reserved to Jews, for Jews. As to, as to the Jews who have already uh, been resident in Germany for some time, uh, the essential Jewish contribution to the Soviet victory is pushed into the background, i.e. treated with skepticism or is acquired by the Soviet policy of with, withholding the truth about the Holocaust, because nobody had spoken about Holocaust during the Soviet Union, so they have very strong narrative of winners. In this regard, outsiders may find the consumption, consumption of the doctoral, doctoral victory sausage on the top, on the, le on the left side, uh, you, you call this in German the hammer. <laughs> um, so three. It's sausage, and it, the name of this sausage is Doctoral Victory Sausage. Doctoral Victory Sausage. So <laughs> originally there was Doctoral Sausage, and they added um, um, at um, 2000, 2005, it was jubileum uh, of the victory in the Soviet Union, and the um, added like doctoral victory sausage, which depicts European liberation from the Nazis from the Soviet army. You see, in in uh, Russia, and they um, imported it to Germany. It was still very popular. That you can find it also today, 2012. Uh, doctor doctoral victory sausage in the Russian in Russian food store. On, of course, only in Russian food store because nobody celebrated victory in Germany, so it, was, it would be really um, problematic <laughs> um, to, 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 you know, to, to sell it in the regular supermarket. It was like, <laughs> absolutely, um, yeah. So it's hardly compatible um, with the killing of, of the consumer's Jewish family members in Bari Yar, for example. Behind each apparent absurd, absurdity, 
for outsiders, there is, however, logic, i.e., the attempt to mediate between irreconcilable, uh, irre irreconcilable paradoxes. Such a situation is particularly, particularly complicated if, it's con if um, it concerns a group who has a negatively laden minority status as migrants with economic resources, without uh, economic resources, as Soviet citizens, as Russians, and as Jews in Germany who claim to be victors but are supported from the social welfare uh, from those um, who were... Um, who lost the war. Furthermore, the status of being ex-Soviet and Jewish is in many aspects, par aspects paradoxical. In this case, the victory sausage symbolically compensates or resists a stigmatized status, that of migrants having no voice and no power who can hardly be seen as the victors under new cir circumstances. At the same time, the victory sausages opposes the other stigmatizes, stigmatized status of uh, the migrants, that of Jews as Holocaust um, victims. Um, by satisfying the needs for familiar circumstances, well-known cultural codes, and an image of home and by restoring original social positions, the Russian-speaking enclave in general and Russian food stores in particular constitute for migrants a supportive niche. Personal and collective affiliations are not only created and modified through verbal expressions, but become visible in material culture used by migrants in each context. The original, the authentic, the real, the right one, as well as... Uh, Cons uh, consumer social sociability receive special meaning and significance for people in the state of migration. This is especially the case when people emigrate from societies characterized by economic scarcity and shortages, shortages um, in comparison with abundant Western societies. Here, too, dreams of the ideal life in the land of milk and honey, and I mean not Israel, I mean Germany, in the sense of material wealth, uh, yeah. <laughs> comes symbolically true uh, by the way of food consumption. One female migrant called the Russian food store tranquilizer, tranquilizer store. Russian food store uh, made it possible to realize for the first, for the first time the tablecloth spread, this tale, children tale of tablecloth spread of the illu uh, illustrious Russian fairy tale with its powerful and magical ability to produce the desire, desired abundance of dishes, wines, fruits and gourmet delicacies. Through symbolic realization of the ideal image of the appropriate home, and the communist food paradise promised in the Soviet homeland, migrants could, could participate in its imagi imaginary political power and richness, albeit in the Western now and here. And uh, the other controversial example is framed picture with the sentence, life has been a success, written with black caviar. I don't know if you can see it, it's written in Russian letters with black caviar on a background composed of red caviar. So life has been success in Russian food store. As an uh, illusory, illusory image of a life without worries, as compensating empowerment mechan mechanism, caviar disguises to an extent numerous diverse difficulties that, new, uh, that migrants experience as um, outsiders or to some extent as a marginal man. Um, let me maybe conclude. Uh, Russian Jewish star. It was, it's good that you, that, that you remark it because I found in um, my field work in Germany uh, in uh, one street two different Russian food stores. One was Russian food stores for Jews 
and the other was Russian food stores for Ausidler, for uh, German Russian speaking uh, migrants. Please don't understand. Huh? Uh, more kosher also with pork, but it was just for, for Russian speaking, speaking Jews, although the assortment was the same. So it was very interesting. Both of them were not kosher, and um, one was held by Jewish migrants, and the other was held by um, Auszilla, by German, uh, Russian speaking German migrants, but it was very important to which store do you go in the field work. So it's also about uh, collective uh, narratives of we and they, we and the other. Maybe I have to, uh, to conclude. I brought some other pictures, but I, 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 I'm not uh, sure if it's uh, now. Maybe it's better to, uh, to discuss transforming and performing their multiple fragmentary identities in their everyday life, Russian-speaking Jews search for their social recognition and participation in dominant discourses in Germany. Similar to clothing, clothing, some home images and cultural tales fit exactly the self-vision of consumers with their subjective sense of one of the most meaningful self-identities, while others are satisfying, combinable, or competitive with prevailing self-definitions, and while certain others' uh, symbols are contradictory to some aspects um, of their self-identity and so provoke uh, a feeling of what you eat is not what you feel you are. The participants always try to find a strategy to cope with contradictions, to breach discrepancies and, or neglect certain, especially controversial, messages and fragments while stressing um, others. I think I stop here and uh, it would be good to discuss. Thank you very much.